Okay, okay, but we're talking about like about the, the before we were so really interrupted by the Department of Power and Water, they're trimming the trees. But um, uh, about the stunt, we were having to go to Gladiator School to actually learn. Actually, we can guarantee you that there was a member from the show, a cast member, sitting right behind us. I mean, this guy is about like this and had arms like tree trunks. So, and, and he walked in like he owns the place. So. But, um, like I said, uh, like a, a, a lot of the stuff, like I said, a lot of stunt work isn't, act, isn't stunt men. It is actors out there, you know, falling down yeah. and stuff, so, and, um, They did ask if they shot it in real time. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think they were shooting it in real time, but the problem, when they were using the, the camera, the Phantom height with a hard drive, in order to make it look like they could give you that slow motion stuff, because, no, like they you know, like when your guy dodging the bullet or dodging the, you know, the, the, the sword. sword is coming back, he has to be able to move. So he's basically falling, and the sword is then coming over. It makes it look mm -hmm. more, makes it look better. But um, but I mean, <clears throat> a lot of the stuff. I mean, I could see a lot of people getting accidentally hurt in that show, though. Oh yeah. So. But uh, I, I would notice, uh, noticing things though that totally historically inaccurate, the problem was when you had injuries as bad as a lot of those people supposedly had, there's no way they could fight again for some time in the future. Mm -hmm. When you're cut clean across here and you're sewed up, sewed up and your face has got a big gash and you're sewed up, you can't fight again because any movement you make tears everything apart. Mm -hmm. So really historically inaccurate too. So, but. Um, you know, it, it was an interesting thing in there, but um, oh, one of the things they discovered, which I didn't, I didn't know this, um, because when you go to other countries, everybody has different rules, right? And so over in New Zealand, you got a ten-hour-a-day rule. You, you can't work, but well, uh, you can't work ten hours. But they asked him about how does that ten hours a day uh, reflect? You know, when you're getting things done, he said, well, it, it didn't to him because he's still working fourteen-hour days. Because yeah, because the writers were here in California. They're here in California, and all the stuff being sent there. So basically, you know, uh, basically it's uh, Tappert and Remy that are mostly doing the stuff over there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, it's. Uh, he says it just makes each episode that you shot. It makes it take longer because you can't shoot as long. Yeah. Because um, he said that the average episode took about 12 days to shoot. Yeah. Where it, for some yeah. of them, it took like 14 to 15. But that's also why there's only like six, uh, six uh, like this last series was six episodes long. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, they'll, I think a lot of the things done per pay are only six to 12 episodes long, period. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. I mean, go look to the Sci Fi Channel. You'll see the popular shows over there. They uh, they'll split them up into two sections, you know, like six here and six, and you know, six here and six oh, next year. Really? Yeah. Oh. And it's called see it's called like I love it how they mark and they mark them A and B. You know, like this is episode uh, two hundred and six A, and then <clears throat> you'll have this is episode <clears throat> two hundred and twelve B. But it's it's the same see same same year, but it's it's got to do actually. With the way the British do things, this is a British series, no matter what you want to call it. Maybe being done, Sam Remy's from America, Tabbert isn't, but uh, you know, Knight, the Knight is also from the United States. He's a graduate out. He's from the College, guys or something down here. But uh, it, the British will tend to do things in sections. I mean, like the guy that does House, uh, you know, a little bit of frying, you know, you know, the stuff that uh, they had the thing was on for like ten years and only shot. 20 episodes. Or oh, Benny really? Hill. Benny Hill. People think the great Benny Hill, who was on television in Great Britain from the 1950s into the 1990s, I think they had 66 episodes. That's it? 66. I thought there were a lot more because no. well, part of it is they used to be on reruns all the time, but unless you watch he all would of them. They do two a year, maybe. Two, mm -hmm. Yeah, two, two, maybe two a year. But, um, uh, so it looks like there's more, but that's how the British, uh, they'll, they'll split the things up. So what happens is the United States in order to not compete with the networks, they split their shows up. So when they're on hiatus in the fall, yeah. the cable is running. When Which is kind of nice because then you always have something to watch. Yeah. It's kind of fresh. But it's sort of, people get pissed off. Like you're, you all mm -hmm. of a sudden stop in the middle. you got to wait six months to see the next one. No, well, months. that's kind of. But, um, but they're all you know, talking about, though, like, him, the good one, that um, on, on the violence in it. 
they wanted, they'd seen the movie 300, oh. you know, by Rod Zombie. And uh, they wanted that sort of violence. Unfortunately, oh. the people that were producing it didn't give them that. Oh. They, they, called, they referred to the 300 as soft R. Right, and they wanted to have a, a really hard R. Yeah, which is why you got the blood being spilled everywhere on the Oh, uh, there was, yeah. I mean, overly did it, folks. They're, they're grossing everybody. It was their heightened reality. But, you know, part of it is, is some of the characteristics of R ratings are what? You have what, blood, gore, sex, yeah. profanity. Well, remember, it was originally, the original thing was party because blood and sand. Well, was it really? Yeah. Oh. yeah. So, uh, and the whole thing is they like they're talking about um, the problem with Spartacus. There's only like about 30 seconds of Spartacus until you get to Spartacus fleeing. Oh, really? The, the Spartacus life, as far as history is concerned, didn't really start until after he led the slave revolt, which oh, then lasted yeah. for months, and which they do have a historical record of everything. You know. Um, uh, well, we all know how Spartacus ends, folks. He gets, he's the last person crucified I know, by the Romans. That's where Caesar became a big shot. Caesar, oh, was that probably, really? That was Caesar's big day, was going after Spartacus. But um, It was a good Q&A session. Yeah, I mean, there, it really was. there was a lot of conversation going on, but you have to understand that this is an Academy, and this is an Emmy screening event, mm -hmm. and these people were guild members of mm -hmm. the various guilds in there. And Which is why their questions were like they were. Yeah, they were all professional questions. We had a gentleman sitting next to us that didn't ask, but he was there, I'm assuming, with the music from the show. Well, yeah, because he had a whole book full of just... Well, the music, and I think so. He was, you know, representing that side. We had people representing the production side, representing the writing side, which is what this is. I'm assuming that because the writer is there... I mean, tonight we're going to go see a production called Cinema Verde that's got Diane Lane. Mm -hmm. And in a couple of nights, we're going to be going seeing uh, Men, of Men of a Certain, certain age. age, which has got Scott Palooka, Ray Romano, and Mr. Bauer. You know, uh, and, and they're all they're all Emmy winners, and they're all Golden Globe winners, mm -hmm. and so you know that they're there representing the acting side. Mm -hmm. But this was she'd never been to one of these things my before, first so one. you should ask. I've been to a lot of them because I've been. I actually had an Emmy nomination. I got to go sit there, and I knew there was not a chance in hell that they're going to give a guy that didn't say a word. Oh, an Emmy. That's not going to happen. But folks. you said a lot by those actions. I said a lot, you know, like the line, you know, you know, I feel sorry for that young man because, you know, that is one mean-looking son of a bitch. <coughs> I just had my hat down over. I had my gun strapped down. I walked in. I look around to see if he was there and then leave. Mm -hmm. And then I go like this with my hat. When I, okay, I was doing the Caruso bit before David Caruso. I had my hat when I was doing my business and when I was ready to leave. And then because my hair was nice and curly, it went right up over the top. Yes. <laughs> no, it, so I've been there and I've done that because I've actually had a nomination. But this is her first time to one of these viewing things. So she <coughs> she was very interested. We were concerned whether or not we were going to get in. Well, because part of it is, is there, there are a lot of guild members. Yeah. When you when we actually sent in the RSVP, they asked if you which guild you belong to, and we belong to none of them. Or actually, I have belonged to none of them. I belong have to belong. all of them. So, so I actually could you know. So we were new, so we got in there. But it's, the, I think the guild members get the seat. Their their seats are like they got reserved for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They marked them off reserved. But it's everything else is first come first serve tonight. We're not even certain we're going to get in or not because yeah, tonight is a full one. The night's a full one. You got to be there. Like we were there an hour before last night. Mm -hmm. You know, so they basically it was nice. They basically didn't charge people for parking last night. That was nice. I'm assuming that as soon as the thing was up, they popped the gate back down and everybody had to pay for parking. So <laughs> that was not good. It's like relief right after the screen. So yeah. all you came from the screen. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. No, but it was. I mean. I felt privileged to be there in the audience because I've been to a lot of um, premieres and screenings of different things where the, the cast was available afterwards. Yeah. But this was really nice. I mean, this is an Emmy screen. Well, yeah. And no. so it was It was really interesting to have the people sit there and ask the questions to the Q&A afterwards. And I mean, you know it's an industry. And, and you could tell the ones that were actually with the show because they're standing there mm -hmm. looking around. They're basically, uh, you know, casing the building, just checking who's there and who isn't there, and um, because they wanted, to, you know, 
<clears throat> and then, actually, which is a lot of a lot of differences, mm -hmm. is the guy was actually there to talk to people after they left. He's in among the people, mm -hmm. all by himself talking to the. You know, these are the guild members he's trying to influence. But he's there. And why would he be trying to influence them? Because he wants an Emmy. Yeah, that's I, a good I, reason to be there. Well, I actually did that. I did that too. Mm -hmm. God, a long time ago. You know, you know what I did? What? I sat there, and they'd ask a question. Did you answer any questions? No. I never said a word. Let's put it this way. I spent a god-awful amount of time never said a word. Nobody knew I could speak. And then here's a good one. Well, I'm doing that show. I'm also, you know, uh, I I'm, all, I'm also doing background. True love, be my only, my one and only. I'm saying in another movie that's being po quite popular, and, you know, at the same time, I'm over. Yeah, but did they know you were the same person? Uh, I, okay, I got these. They tend to stick out, you know. <laughs> I, I, my ears stick out. I mean, they all knew it was the same person. I did hear, hey, can you sing for us? Uh-huh, they knew. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't say that. The, it was the persona, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm, I showed up dressed in black. And, and you dressed up like you were in the character. I was in character. I showed up in character. But you know that things started going downhill. Look, well, can you sing for us? That's because they weren't getting your response other than your and then that's when I that's when I put the sunglasses on. That's my indication. I mean, I was doing the Caruso a bit. Can you sing for us? You know, tip the hat, I put my glasses on, and then I just stared. So, <laughs> I actually was a halfway decent actor when I was young. I'm old and retired now, but I mean, like I said, you've seen her thing. She got all wound up by it, and she's hoping. I know. Well, we'll bring you information on as many of these Emmy screenings we can go to. Yeah, this was just the first. We're also hoping to get into the, the Academy Award stuff very shortly because we're actually hoping to have a project in play for the Oscars at the moment. We got two done right now, we just gotta start showing it. Hopefully the first one's gonna be Chicago Film Festival. But uh, we could do the Burbank if we want, but Burbank charges too much to get into. I mean, if I'm gonna get turned down, I'm gonna get turned by in Chicago. See it's irrelevant because the rules are to qualify. All you have to do is to run the production in a theater in Los Angeles to, before the period Burbank is Burbank doesn't qualify though. No, yeah, it qualifies. It doesn't. It's Burbank. It's not Los Angeles. No, if you get an award, it qualifies. Most okay. Most uh, mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. award show. If you get an award for best, because we are the best, I'll guarantee you, uh, our Sea Rock Slide is the best there is. There's nothing to compete with it. Mm -hmm. Nothing because it's our own. It's nobody amazing. nobody can do two D and three D at the same time. In a, in a piece of artwork. I mean, it can't be done, but we can do it. It's our own section. So it's, uh, and we also know it's got awful popular out of this country. Maybe I can get an award in England for something. You know, you know why? Maybe we could do it from there. Get the BAFTA award for best mind, best film short. But it is a, it's a good piece. So we're expecting, we're expecting to get a nomination, but they don't really like us in the Academy because we do, they don't like 3D and it isn't 3D. So, but, um, Actually, uh, probably should have. I, I never even thought about it at the time. But see, that Spartacus. Actually, he was talking about it too. He said some of the effects uh, were so good he actually thought they were 3D when he saw it on his when he saw the work. And he said, "Oh my God, I love that!" And then he goes and see it when it's finished. <laughs> yeah, they weren't. He thought that they did it in 3D, and that he didn't need the glasses to see it. Oh. And they changed it. So he was really wound up about his show. I mean, really. Mm -hmm. Very proud of the fact, you consider all the problems the gentleman has had. Because they, this is the third retooling of the I, show. You know what? I, I I just feel for him because their lead guy, <clears throat> the guy that played Spartacus, got cancer. Yeah. I mean, and so then they thought his cancer was a remission. So what they did after the cancer was they did a prequel. Yeah. Right? Well, so he they, was getting back in shape, which is what he was doing. He was getting shape. They wrote the script for the next season with him going to be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then... Yeah, and then he wasn't. He's not going to be there. Then he moved back into remission. And then the fact, too, that they don't have John Hanna and Lucy Wallace, you know. They're hoping to get them back for flashbacks. 
But remember, oh, no, that's, that, boy, talk about a challenge because you're here in time, and then oh, actually, the cameras would be reversed out, so then yeah. you go back. Wait a minute, we'll go, no, like, get it, go beforehand, and then you're back to current days. No, it's but what uh, a, oh. no, but I remember I mean, when I was doing. Uh, okay, one of the people, uh, the guy that played Little John in um, in in combat, he, my father knew him from back to, they, actually they went to high school together out here. Mm -hmm. And um, the, so he, I got, I was doing combat, I'd do it sporadically because they needed tall, you know, actually by, she knows, by Hollywood standards, I'm god awful tall. They needed a tall blonde And you know what, you type. still are when we go to Hollywood events. Oh, yeah, I, I stand out with my blonde hair and my size, I towel over. I think maybe why the girls come, because they, I, they could see me above everybody else's heads, but um, you know, he was telling us, telling, you know, we were sitting there, and he was talking about, you know, like my, my grandmother was a Christian wife, my father was a second young man, and we were talking about the, the thing, he said, well, you, you, you know that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, Hanson and, and Saunders are basically injured. They're not going to be there for a couple of weeks. And uh, the guy that played Cage, they said Bob Hogan, who was, uh, you know, played the BRR man, and him said, we're going to have to carry the show for a few weeks. And uh, the scripts aren't designed for that, folks. Mm -hmm. So what happens is um, they're sitting there rejiggering things on the fly because of something like that happening. And I said, then, I mean, he said, I don't want to be a star. <laughs> you know, he's a big, big, lumbering guy. And then, you know, Bob Hogan's a VR man and a guy that played Cage. What the hell do we become actors for? You know, because they were happy being the characters they were playing. They were, they, they, they knew that they weren't getting killed off, which a lot of, if you were on combat and you were a member of the squad, mm -hmm. two or three people, I mean, we're talking, Shelly Berman was a member of the squad. The, you know, the guy, the comic. Uh, that's a lot of big actors were members of the squad. They get killed off every season because he had to kill somebody, but they were happy. We had a gig. And they said, you know, I, 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 you know, the guy that goes on, he said to my father, he said, they may notice that I'm there and kill me. <laughs> yeah. You know, because I, I, I knew another man that was in a series, you know, one of the other series that I did, he spent two years hiding from people. And when they discovered, who the hell are you? Well, I'm, I'm the lieutenant. And he said, what do you do? He said, well, I, I'm in every episode. You are? Killing. You know, he, he'd been, he basically got caught doing a bigger part and they didn't like him so they got rid of him and they figured you know the, the three actors are carrying the show for two weeks because of the injuries and they weren't used to being a lot of air screen time they thought they're going to get a bus fired now mm -hmm. because they discovered we could act <laughs> no but i saw the problem that they had when they were missing for a couple of weeks and I can do, I absolutely feel for oh, this talk poor about guy. A, a headache. This oh. is his third retooling of the show. Third. And he doesn't have the people that he had with him on this part because they're no longer necessary because they're getting ready for the escape, which is going to last for years if the show goes on. Mm -hmm. because so they had to recast Spartacus. They had to recast mm -hmm. Spartacus. I mean, uh, new actors, new actresses. Mm -hmm. The whole works is having to be redone, plus the fact they said that in a sense it screwed everything up because 